All right, adding, subtracting, rational expressions. Now, the last section was a little bit easier just because multiplying and dividing fractions is easier than adding and subtracting them because we didn't need common denominators. And so as a quick warm-up, we'll just remember how we used to do things when we subtracted. So if we have 6 and 9 as denominators, we want to know what's the lowest common denominator that we can use 6 and 9 out of. Now, the easiest way to do that was just to multiply the 2, 6 times 9, but we'd have to reduce in the end, and it gets really ugly when x's are involved. And so we want to know how to find the lowest. Well, so what I usually did was just take 9 and keep doubling it, or take 6 and keep um, multiplying by 2 and different things like that. But 18 is what they have in common, because 3 times 6 is 18, 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 9 is 18, and 2 times 2, multiplying top and bottom by the same thing. And so we're just changing the way it looks, not changing a value of it. And then 18 minus 18 is 18, and 15 minus 4 is 11. The thought behind it is that with 6, we have 3 times 2, and with 9, we have 3 times 3. And so because of that, we can see that the 3s are what they have in common. And so this lowest common denominator is going to need a 3 and a 3 to accommodate the 9. And then this extra 2, but not that other 3. And so this idea is what we're going to use later on. Um, so 8 and 12. We can have 24. And 24, thinking 12, 24, oh yeah, and 8 goes into 24 as well. Because 2 times 12 is 24, 5 times 2 is 10, 8 times 3 is 24, and 3 times 1 is 3. And so 13 over 24. The thought is, again, 8 is made up of 4 times 2, and 12 is made up of 4 times 3. And so because the 4 they have in common, we don't need another 4, but we do need the 2 and we do need the 3. That would work the same way if you went to 2 times 2 times 2 and 2 times 2 times 3. So 4 times 2 is 8 times 3 is 24, and that's how you can come up with the lowest common denominator as well. So what we're doing here is now we have an algebraic expression. We still need common denominators, and so we have x minus 3 and x minus 3. And so we're going to end up with x minus 3. The key is that we need common denominators in order to do this. And so all we're going to do is subtract the top. Be careful because the subtraction sign gets distributed to both the 4x and the 5. Sometimes we forget to do the later terms. So 2x minus 4x is negative 2x, and 7 plus 5 is 12. And there you have it. So in order to add or subtract fractions, or in our case rational expressions, we have to have common denominators. And that is the most important part of what we're doing here. Sometimes the trickiest part. So that last example we talked about, you want to be careful when you're subtracting because this minus sign makes all of these negative. Now you could distribute the minus sign to the bottom but then you wouldn't have common denominators. And so subtracting is the same as adding a negative. Negative, negative, and the negative make a positive. So then you combine like terms. 3x squared minus 2x squared is 1x squared, or just x squared. Negative 5x and a negative x make a negative 6x. And then we just have a positive 8 on the end over x minus 2. Now one thing you want to keep in mind is can I simplify this any further, just like what we were doing in the last section. And so what multiplies to 8 and adds to 6, we've got 4 and 2 negative 4, negative 2, so we can factor x minus 4 
times x minus 2 divide by x minus 2 and we get the x minus 2's cross out. Only cross out when it's multiplied and so finally we end up with just x minus 4. Alright, on to the real deal. So, first thing I want to do is look at what is the lowest common denominator. So, right now they're going to have a 2 and a 3. We need both of those to make the 6. So we need the 2 and the 3. This one has an x squared, this one has an x. So if we multiplied this one by another x, we would get it. And so we don't need x cubed because the highest power is just x squared. So, 4 over 2x squared. What does it still need to get our common denominator? It needs the 3. So we multiply by 3 over 3. And our 1 over 3x, it has the 3 and 1x. It needs another x to get x squared. And so it needs another x, and it needs a 2 to get it to be 6. So 4 times 3 is 12 over 6x squared. 2 times 3 is 6x squared. 1 times 2 is 2x. 3x and 2x make 6x squared. Just want to double check that it's actually giving you what you want. And then 12 plus 2x is just that. I'm going to write 2x plus 12 just so that we have it in standard form there. No big deal. And <coughs> again, the last thing you want to look at can you simplify top to bottom? There's a 2 in each one of these terms. I'm going to do it the long way around. Factor out the 2. Take a 2 out of 2x, leaves an x. Take a 2 out of 12, you get a 6. You get 6x squared. You want to make sure that everything's factored before you cancel out the common factors. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so we're left with x plus 6 over... 3x squared. And there you have it. Alright, next one. Lowest common denominator. What we have is 3x, and it looks like the 3x is something that both have in common, except that it's not a common factor. We couldn't just subtract 15 from top and bottom to get this denominator, because subtracting 15 top and bottom changes the value of it. And so the lowest common denominator on this one is actually going to be 3x times 3x minus 15. We're going to have to multiply the two together. Except for that this is 3 times x minus 5, <clears throat> and this is 3 times x. And so we're not going to need the 3 in both of them, so we can erase that 3. If you want to, let's write it in its factored form. So, 3 times x times x minus 5. So, 11 over, I'm going to write this in its factored form just so it's easier to see what else we need. This needs the x over the x. This already has the 3x out front, and so this needs the x minus 5. And so this is going to be foiled out up top. Um, we get 11x over 3 times x times x minus 5 minus. So we get x squared minus 5x plus x minus 5 over 3x x minus 5. I'm going to distribute this negative sign. Negative positive, negative, positive. And you're left with 3x, x minus 5, over negative x squared. 5 and 11 make 16, minus 1 is 15x plus 5. And that is where we leave it. I look to see, can I factor anything that multiplies to 5 and adds to 15? There's nothing there, and so we're going to stop right there.